How do you go from a bunch of images to a 3D model? It turns out that there are several options available and in this video I'll be presenting a few of them. But first a quick overview of the process. It starts with the construction of a sparse point cloud consisting of the features of the input images. Those will be matched with high confidence. At the same time, the positions of the camera are being computed. Once the camera poses are known, the second step consists of creating a dense point cloud. We are talking about millions of points, even for a simple object. The points can be colored and the resulting cloud can already be a useful result by itself. Note, however, how it's still just a set of disconnected points, there are no faces in the model. And, as you probably already guessed, the third step is the surface reconstruction, where the faces are added to the model, which becomes more tangible. This can also be colored, but keep in mind that this is a colorization applied on the vertices, it's not a texture. This means that if you reduce the number of points in order to simplify the geometry, you'll end up losing detail. So the last step is indeed that of reanalyzing the images and computing the textures to be applied on the model. In this way, we get a model with much better paint detail. This also makes it possible to further process the model, for example simplifying it by reducing points, without impacting negatively on the visual appearance. And now, let's go and see what programs are available for us. This is not a comprehensive list, it's those programs which I managed to get working. They are open source, and I believe they are all available for Windows, OS X and Linux. In most cases, building these programs is far from trivial, so being a Linux user myself, I decided to package all of them in the SNAP format, which is a cross-distribution packaging format for Linux. So if you are wise enough to use Linux, you'll also see how to easily install these programs in your machine. And now that you've been staring at this table for a while, I can tell you what it means. The first column lists the programs, and the other columns tell what phases of the reconstruction they support. Green means that the operation is supported, red means that it isn't, and you'll have to switch to another program in order to perform that step. Luckily, all of these programs can export and load partial reconstructions in several formats, so there's a very good chance that there is a conversion program for any path you decide to choose. Here are the paths I've tested myself. And without further ado, let's see these programs in action. Visual SFM is probably the most popular program. You can find plenty of YouTube videos mentioning it, and it's quite easy to use. Unfortunately, it's not completely open source, the user interface part is closed source. Building it is a pain, but installing the snap is all another experience. Once started, we just have to load the images, which takes a while, and by the way, I'll be cutting the recording while programs are working or this video would be a day long. These reconstructions can easily take a couple of hours. I press a button to start matching features across the images, and once this is done, we can start the sparse reconstruction. We can see the cameras appearing as their position is computed, which is not super useful, but quite pleasant. Once this is completed, we can start the dense reconstruction. We choose a folder to store the result and get armed with a lot of patience. For this step, Visual SFM internally uses CMVS, which is another of the tools we'll see later. And one hour and 40 minutes later, it's done. There's not much more we can do in Visual SFM, so we switch to MeshLab to perform the surface reconstruction and the texturing. MeshLab is an application with tons of features for processing 3D models and point clouds. It's a must-have, and it's also very easy to install. In Ubuntu we can do that from the software center, and it's also not hard to use. In fact, I recommend using it no matter what reconstruction pipeline you use. You can use it as a simple mesh viewer at the very least, or make it perform complex operations. Let's use it now to load a reconstruction generated by Visual SFN in order to turn it into texture 3D model. First, we load the sparse reconstruction, don't be fooled by the file name I used. For some reason, the objects generated by the reconstruction pipelines are always rotated in a wrong way. So let's turn this poor statue as it should be. This way.
Okay. If the scene we loaded contains information on the camera poses, MeshLab can also align the view to any of the source images, so we can see which features of the images were used for the reconstruction. Generally, it's high contrast areas with no reflections or motion, those who work best. Now we load the dense cloud generated by Visual SFM. Again, we have to spin it a bit. We hide the sparse cloud, we don't need to see it now. And to simplify the model, we select only the interesting part. We then invert the selection. So we can delete the rest. It's now time to turn this point cloud into a real model by giving it a skin. We apply the Poisson reconstruction. I'd recommend a depth of at least 10, let's use 12 here. After a couple of minutes, we get our model filled with faces, including a few more which we didn't need. So again, we select the faces we need, press I to invert the selection and delete. Now comes an optional step, which is simplifying the model by face decimation given that we have more than 5 million faces here. On the areas which are less interesting, we can apply a much more aggressive reduction. Let's keep uh, 30,000 faces here. This takes a couple of minutes. Then for the statue itself, Let's set the target to half a million. It's still a lot, really, uh, but I, I prefer to play safe. Okay. As you can see, there isn't a noticeable loss of detail here. But at least the interface got a bit more responsive because the model is lighter on the GPU. Before reconstructing the textures, we need to remove faces from non-manifold edges. Don't ask anything, just trust me. And let's go for the texture reconstruction. This field is the size of the texture atlas, which will contain all the textures, so it may be a good idea to use a higher value. Done, this object is now textured. Let's have a look at the texture atlas which has been generated. Just out of curiosity. The statue looks good, I am quite happy with the result. We can export it as a 3D model and import it in Blender for example. But while I'm at it, let me simplify it once more. One nice thing about MeshLab is that all the parameters have their meaning explained on the side if you activate the help. A minute later, our geometry has been simplified once more, but the texture is still there, so I really cannot notice any difference. Well, I hope this quick overview of MeshLab was not too boring, and let's move to the next beast. Another graphical application which can be used for 3D reconstructions is Colmap. This can be also installed as a snap, it's a big one so it takes some time. After starting it, we need to create a new project and choose a folder where the reconstruction data will be stored and we'll need to choose the location where the input images are located. We can then proceed with the feature extraction. I will decrease the image size a bit, hoping that this will make it a bit faster. And three minutes later, this is done. Next is the feature matching. 
which will try to find similar elements in the input images. This is a rather lengthy operation, it took more than one hour here. And now we can start with the 3D reconstruction. We see a lot of numbers, but also we see uh, the cameras appearing around the sparse model that is being reconstructed. And about seven minutes later, our sparse model is ready. And I have to say that it looks great. The sparse reconstruction by Colmap seems to be the most complete of the bunch. The next phase of the reconstruction is the multi-view stereo, which is basically the dense reconstruction. We first need to pick a location for the output files, and then we can start with the undistortion. This process goes through our input images and applies a length correction according to the data obtained in the previous step and generates undistorted images. This took less than a minute. And then we can start with the dense reconstruction, which unfortunately requires CUDA, which is a technology only available on NVIDIA cards, so I will not be able to show it. However, even if you cannot continue with the 3D reconstruction inside the Colmap, you can still use another tool, such as PMVS, which we will see later, to get a dense reconstruction out of the data generated by Colmap. And let's enter the world of command line applications. Bundler. Bundler can easily be installed as a snap, and it's extremely easy to use. You just need to create a working directory. We copy all the picture files into it. And we just have to execute a single command, which actually is a front-end for a set of tools that you, you might not have to use unless you need to customize some parameters. The whole reconstruction is relatively fast. It took between 30 and 40 minutes, and we can open it in MeshLab. In MeshLab, we need to open the bundler project file, which is located in the subdirectory bundle and is called bundle.out. After that, we need to open the list.txt file, which is located in the same directory where our images are, and our sparse reconstruction is loaded. We need to enable the visibility of the point cloud in order to see it, and as usual, rotate it a bit. As you can see, the reconstruction is not as accurate or complete as the one we got from Colmap, but this actually doesn't matter, because the important thing is that we got the camera poses, which will allow us to continue the reconstruction. So let's move on to CMVS2 in order to turn our sparse cloud into a dense cloud. The CMVS package, which we will be installing as a snap, consists of two different tools. One is called CMVS, and is used to split a large cloud into a set of clusters, which can then be processed individually. But I will not be using it now, since our model is relatively small. And the other tool, which we will be using on the output of Bundler, is called PMVS, and converts a sparse cloud into a dense cloud. So let's take the list.txt and bundle.out files, which were generated by Bundler, and create a script which we have to execute to prepare the project and the options file which will be used to run PMVS. We need to modify the suggested command line and modify it so that the correct binary is executed. After a few minutes the reconstruction is completed and we can load the dense cloud in MeshLab. Unfortunately in this case the reconstruction didn't go too well. The wall was properly reconstructed but most of the statue is missing. This might be just an unlucky case, or it might be that the output from Bundler had some mistakes. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. MVE is a set of command line tools which will take you through most of the 3D reconstruction process. It will take you from the initial set of images to a complete colored 3D model, with only the texturing part being left to other tools. After installing the snap, we can initialize the scene by using the make scene tool, which will take the path to the input image files and the location where our reconstructions will be found. The next step is the structure from motion, which basically means reconstructing the scene, finding where the cameras were located and their parameters, and this is done by matching the features on the image files. 
and it will take about 10 minutes. At this point we can start the DM Recon tool, which will reconstruct the depth map of the scene and will take about 45 minutes. This does not generate a point cloud yet, but we are just one inch away. We just have to start the scene to be set tool with the location of our scene and the output path of our dense point cloud. And here is our point cloud loaded in MeshLab. It consists of about 20 million points. It's quite heavy on the CPU, but it looks great. It's now time to turn our point cloud into a model with full faces, so let's use the FSS Recon to perform the surface reconstruction. We pass in input the location of our point cloud and the location where we would like our model to be generated. This took about 25 minutes and at this point we can open our model in MeshLab. This model consists of about 3 million faces and it looks quite good. It's quite detailed, but also presents many clusters of dirt. Don't worry, we are going to get rid of them in the next step. The Mesh Clean tool will perform a few operations to clean up and simplify the model. You might have noticed how these tools operate on PLY files, which is a standard format for 3D models, which means that they could also be used on models which are not generated by MVE. Now let's see our clean model in MeshLab, and I'm quite impressed. It's made up of about 2 million faces and it looks extremely clean and detailed. I can't wait to see how it looks after texturing. MVS texturing, as the name implies, can be used to texture a model. The snap package is very small and consists of a single tool, TexRecon. As input, it needs to be given a scene, which can be in many formats, like the one produced by MV or Visual SFM, then the path to the model which must be textured, and finally the name for the output model. This will keep your computer busy for about 15 minutes, and then we can open the model in MeshLab. This looks great as well, and you can also see that the texture atlas is rather clean and simple. And we can move on to the next one then. The next on the list is OpenMVG. This will get us from the initial set of images to a dense point cloud. After installing the snap package, we need to tell OpenMVG where our pictures are located. Now, there is a little catch. OpenMVG requires to know the focal length in pixels of the camera which was used to take the photos. The program will attempt to get this measure out of the EXIF information embedded in the image, but if this data is not there, then we need to specify it manually. An estimate of this measure, which empirically works quite well, can be obtained by multiplying by 1.2 the maximum size between width and height of the image. I am using Python in the terminal to get this value, but feel free to use whatever calculator you prefer. The image listing tool takes just a couple of seconds, and the next step is to extract the features out of the images. We pass as input the sfmdata.json file which was generated by the image listing and we specify the output directory where the data should be stored. In my case this took less than 10 minutes and now we have to compute the matches between the images so we use the compute matches tool again with the same parameters and less than a minute later we can start the incremental structure from motion algorithm. We specify the project file where the matches were located and an output directory for the reconstruction. Less than 10 minutes later the point cloud is ready and we can open it in MeshLab. At this point we could already pass the ball to another program to continue with the reconstruction, but OpenMVG provides us with a couple of tools which we might want to use. The first one is to colorize the sparse cloud. Let's have just a quick look at it, but if you intend to continue with the reconstruction you probably don't need it. And the other tool is Compute Structure from Known Poses, which, if I understood correctly, basically processes the input images and generates a more robust point cloud. Why shouldn't we do it, given that it takes just a few seconds? Happy with this reconstruction, we could continue to process it with CMVS or OpenMV, but given that we have already seen them, let's use another one instead. OpenMVS is a set of tools for multi-view stereo, that is, they transform a point cloud plus a set of camera poses into a textured object. Installing it on Linux is a snap, pun intended, 
and let's see how it works on the reconstruction that we got from OpenMVG. After importing the project, we run the densified point cloud to turn the sparse point cloud generated by OpenMVG into a dense cloud. And here is our dense point cloud in MeshLab, but let's not waste time on it and move instead on the surface reconstruction. The reconstruct mesh tool can eat up a lot of memory. In fact, in my machine it couldn't complete the reconstruction of this point cloud, so I had to specify the decimate parameter with a value set to 4 in order to simplify the mesh. The reconstruction took 35 minutes, and as you can see it's not color, but it looks quite good. There are no extra clusters here, and it consists of about 2 million faces. We can simplify it with another tool provided by OpenMVS, which is the Refine Mesh tool. Again, I had to pass an extra option to decrease the resolution level, otherwise it wouldn't complete in my machine. About 5 minutes later, I got the result, which is a mesh of about 200,000 faces, which we are now going to texture with the Texture Mesh tool. This operation took only 3 minutes here, and let's see the result in MeshLab. This looks very good. Out of curiosity, I also ran the Texture Mesh tool on the unrefined mesh, that is the mesh that had 2 million faces. We can compare the two, and I think you will agree with me that the refined mesh looks much better, probably because it's simpler, and therefore the texture got applied more smoothly. Happy with this? Let's try the next one. Theia is a tool that takes a set of images and computes a set of camera poses and a sparse point cloud. After installing the snap, the most convenient way to run it is to copy one option file from the Thea installation directory into the current working directory and modifying it a bit. We need to enter the location of our image files, a working directory where to store the matches, then where to output the reconstructed files and the calibration files. I'm setting the number of threads to match the number of cores in my CPU and I'm setting the feature density to dense, hoping that this will lead to a better reconstruction. And I specify that I want the incremental reconstruction, which is supposed to perform better. Then we just need to run the build reconstruction tool and specify our option files as flag file. Oops, it turns out that we should have left the calibration option empty, as it's used for input and not for output, as I thought. Ok, let's run it again, and it turns out that Theia is by far the fastest of all the programs I tried. The reconstruction took only 3 minutes, and let's use the write reconstruction ply file to write the point cloud into a format which can be opened by MeshLab. And here is our point cloud. At this point we are done with Theia, and we can continue the reconstruction with other tools. I chose to go with OpenMVS. I'm not going to show you the whole procedure again because it's very similar to what you have already seen, so let me just show you the final result. We can indeed recognize our statue, but the result is not very accurate or detailed. It looks like the left arm of the statue is actually missing. I would say that this is an expected trade-off given the fantastic speed of Theia. Well, this concludes my high-level and totally non-technical overview of these technologies. Please have a look at the description to find more information and a lot of links. And keep an eye on this channel because I will be posting more of this stuff in the future. That's all folks, have fun with 3D reconstructions!